let's solve this problem. If the coefficient of static friction at the contact point A, so let's find our contact point A, and at contact point B, here's our contact point B, is 0.3. So we have a mu sub s equal to 0.3, and it's not different for the floor versus the wall. Okay. Determine the maximum force P. Well, here's our load P applied. Looks like there's a rope connected to this uh, cylinder that has a, or a spool that has an inner uh, uh, radius of 0.5 foot for where the load P comes up. And it has also an outer radius of 0.8 foot. Okay, so that's our spool. So we want that maximum force, this is a key word, maximum, force P that can be applied without causing the 80 pound spool to move. So the spool has weight. And right away you can think, well, where's the center of the spool? Right in the middle. And uh, it's very common, that's where we put the load known as the weight on our free body diagram for that spool. So the spool, I need a free body diagram of this spool. At the point where the spool is about ready to slip. All right, now these are tough questions. As I've shown, pulling up, I'm not pushing down, we're pulling up, that's a rope, P is pulling up. Will the spool slip by rotating in the counterclockwise direction, or will the spool slip by rotating in the clockwise direction? The first big decision that you're faced with. Which way will the spool slip if it starts to rotate? That you need to get right. And if you don't get right, we're off to a really bad start. Okay, now, armed with the notion that the spool will slip in the counterclockwise direction. Think about B only. Think about B. The floor is not going to move. Will the spool move in that direction or in the opposite direction at B over the floor? Won't it slip in the counterclockwise direction? Okay. We're going to, what we need to do now is we need to build a free body diagram of our spool. And our spool is going to be right here. Let me be, maybe I should, uh, I'm going to recycle my illustration, okay? I'm going to have, uh, at B, I'm going to have a big normal force N sub B supporting it. And I have a big choice. I have friction at the contact point B and it's perpendicular to that normal load. And the friction force, which is not applied on the floor, I'm focusing my attention on the spool, the spool. To the bottom of the spool, does the friction force go that way, or does the friction force go that way? And it all depends on which way you think it, the spool is going to slip. Remember our little discussion? We are pulling up. The spool is going to slip in that direction, isn't it? I mean, let's, let's do this. I have a, a block, and it's sitting on a surface. I'm pushing on the block with the great force P. It's ready to start slipping. When I cut the block free from the surroundings, isn't that the correct direction of the friction force? Because this is the direction of slip or what we call impending motion. It's going to slip in that direction, isn't it? See that? So armed with that is the friction force in that direction or is the friction force in that direction? Don't call it out. I really want you to do this. And then once you make that determination about B, Come up here to A, a little harder, because some students will think, hmm, at A, maybe that's the direction of the normal at A. Or some students say, no, that's not the correct direction. This is the direction of the normal at A. It needs to be, you know, acting on the spool to the, either to the right or to the left. And then the same thing, I need the correct direction of the friction force at A. I know it's either up or down. 
Is it up or is it down friction force today? Do you see all these choices you have to make? Can you get a clean free body diagram on your sheet of paper? I need to check it. Once we get that, we can solve this problem. All right, so let me pick it up here. Yes, we need a clean free body diagram of the spool. Now, if somebody shows you that, it makes it look too easy to get that. There's a lot of work to get this, isn't there? Okay, where are my, where's my wall and my floor? The wall and my floor is not a part of the free body diagram of the spool. Focus on the spool, cut it free. Okay, and uh, I have the normal pushing up, the normal on the wall. The only way that the wall at A can push on it, it can't pull it to the left. It can only resist uh, pushing back in positive ends of A in that direction. And we did a lot of discussion about the direction of impending slip, and the friction is going to resist it. And so here is the F of A and the F of B, the correct direction of that. So now you're going to get a lot of points on an exam. If you can get a free body diagram that is really clean, but I'm grading the exams from last week, and guess what? There were some students, they just missed a significant part of the free body diagram, and they like, hold it, I have a fixed support at the wall, but they didn't put a moment for that fixed support at the wall, the reaction. You, you just missed the whole problem. I mean, you left it off. You left it out of the calculation. So you can't leave off N sub A or F sub A and then solve this problem correctly. Okay, now that you have them all in there, what are my three equations of equilibrium for this problem? Sum of the force X, sum of the forces Y, sum of the moments about some point of particular interest. Let's just write those equations, sum of the forces in the X. It must equal to zero. What do you get for that? What do we get? So go ahead and write it out, and then do the sum of the forces and the y equal to zero. What do you get? And then let's do this, sum of the moments, and as a class, which point do you want to, do you think you would like to do it about? There's, I would say, at least three choices, maybe four. Do it about point B, do it about point A, do it about the center of gravity of the spool, or do it about the point of application of P onto the spool. You could do all of those points. Let's do this. Let me just say, for you, for today, for right now, do it about the center of gravity, the center of the spool, so that we all have the same equation, okay? Let's, let's, uh, let's call, do the center. You could put this CG if you wanted to, or, or some other notation. Maybe you think about the coordinate system, put the origin of the coordinate system there, something. I need those three equations. Don't try and solve them. Just get them correct. All right, let me do this. Let me pick it up at this point. Now, there were really five unknowns. We don't know N sub A. We don't know F of A. We do not know N sub B. We do not know F of B. And we do not know the P at which it starts to slip. But the whole thing is, is this is our maximum. As soon as we say that's our maximum, I know that it's starting to slip at A and it's starting to slip at B. I reduce from five unknowns to three unknowns because of two additional equations. They're my frictional slip equations. It's basically the maximum frictional force at the point of slipping at A can only be mu sub S times N sub A. So it's like any place I see F of A, I can replace it by mu sub S times N sub A. Basically, I've kind of gotten an extra equation to get rid of F of A. Okay, And likewise, mu of S times N sub B, because it's at the point of slipping at both locations, right? See that? So now I only have three unknowns, N sub A, N sub B, and P. And hence, I've got my three equations. Or if you wanted to, you could say, well, here's my fourth equation, and this is my fifth equation, and yes, I have five un Great. Five equations, five unknowns, or three equations, three unknowns, whichever way you like to work it.
Okay. Now, somebody comes in and they say, I think the sum of the force is an X. That's just going to be that uh, N sub A is equal to F of B, and F of B is mu sub S times N sub B. True? Okay. Somebody comes in and says the sum of the forces in the Y, we're going to have N sub B pushing up. We'll have F of A pushing up, but F of A is mu sub S times N sub A pushing up. We'll have B pushing up, and then we have the weight down. Don't forget the weight. It's important. And then we have the sum of the moments about the origin, point O. Well, we have the P at a moment arm of 0.5 foot, and that's making it want to rotate in the counterclockwise. Everything else makes it want to rotate in the clockwise, which is our frictional force F of A, but the F of A is mu sub S N sub A, and its moment arm distance is 0.8, as well as F of B, which is mu sub S, N sub B, times the same moment arm, 0.8. You could simplify this a little bit. You could say mu sub S times 0.8 times the sum of N sub A plus N sub B. Uh, put the half right there. Simplify. All right, three equations, three unknowns. You have a chance of solving it. Somebody comes in and they say, here is the solution on a golden platter. We're going to say that N sub A is uh, 14 pounds. N sub B is equal to 46.666. This is go with 7 now. And then P is equal to 29.12 pounds. Let's just say you were given, or you did a lot of work and you solved for these. How do you have confidence that these are the correct solutions for my three equations? Put them into each equation and see if they work. And if you do, they will work. But you should do that. Even after you do a lot of work right in here to get your answers, you should develop, the, if you have time on an exam, sometimes we don't have a lot of time, but you should develop the habit of saying, okay, let me go back and double check to see if this is correct. And they will, they should confirm, okay? Some people are checking me, excellent. But in the interest of time, because I'm gonna run out of time, I'm just gonna say that this was our final solution for the problem. P is 29.1 pounds, okay? Any comments or questions about this problem?